Okay, so here's the brand new simulation technology inside of both Inventor and Pro Engineer. So I'll slide over here, and what we see in the lower right corner is technology itself. So this plugin gives you those design for manufacturability indicators. Okay, we'll start with this uh, tub part. Nothing new, right? We've had these uh, fill animation results for several decades now. So we'll shake it up a little bit by adding a complex pattern of ribs to the part. All right, so this is where it gets more interesting. The plugin recalculates instantaneously, and we can see the updated fill pattern. So that's totally new. Okay, so pretty simple part. So now let's think for a second how this might change how simulation gets used. No longer is it an afterthought or a stop in the process. It's an integrated concurrent part of the design process. All right, so now let's switch over to something a little bit more complex so we can show off the rest of what this new technology can do. Okay, the first indicator is all about manufacturability and helping you answer the question, can I even mold this thing? All right, so we'll first take a look at the wall thickness. It's one of the basic design rules, but also one of the most important decisions you have to make early in the design process as a plastics designer. So an alert will show up if your plastic part is too thick, too thin, or if there's a lot of variance. Or you can just pull up the wall diagnostic plot anytime to take a look. So next up is undercuts. This time we get an alert saying that there are areas of the part that would be difficult to eject without complex tooling, which is pretty much the definition of an undercut. So all we have to do is click the alert, and it brings up the diagnostics showing everywhere there's an undercut feature on the part. Now the last of the design rule checks is for draft angle. So again, there's a, an alert saying that there are a few surfaces that are not drafted properly. Nobody's perfect, right? Uh, and an alert comes up showing where we forgot to draft, so super handy as well. Now, in this video we're showing everything after the fact, but remember, all of these recalculate every single time the design is modified. So as soon as you forget, make an error, violate des a design rule, you're going to know about it immediately. Okay, so the next thing we'll talk about is weld lines. These are available because we're doing real-time fill analysis. So the alert gives you the option to pull up the animation and the injection location toolbars. The best part about this is we can actually play with different gating configurations so that we get the best placement of the weld line. Pretty cool. Of course, for aesthetics, this is mandatory. We can also find out where sink marks are. Now, the plot itself is nice, but to really understand how bad they are, here's a finished part preview. And this gives us a much better idea of the location and the relative visibility of the sink marks within a part. And we can even ultimately bring these into showcase with the other mold fluid products and show that very visually. Very information, important information to have when aesthetics are, are critical. Now, the last thing we have is the ability to see the injection pressure that's required to fill the part. So again, we can move this injection location around. We can play with different scenarios to see the effects that it has and what pressures are required to fill this. All right, so if that wasn't enough, there are two indicators we haven't even touched yet. Okay, so next up is cost. We have three factors. Mold cost is influenced by the overall size of the part as well as the complexity. So for example, the more undercut features it detects, the higher the cost is going to be. Now, material cost is a relative indicator based on the material you've selected to mold this part. The default is always ABS, but that can be changed in the iProperties dialog. And then finally, the production cost is completely based on cycle time. No big surprise there. And of course, the biggest factor is usually the cooling time as far as affecting the cycle time goes. So making the part thinner will help us reduce the cycle time and reduce the cost by reducing the cooling time. All right, now the last indicator, certainly not least, is the plastic material impact. So with this one, there's actually four factors at play, the first of which is the carbon footprint. So the carbon footprint does a calculation as to how many kilograms of CO2 are produced when you actually have to make the raw material needed to mold this part. Okay, so to show you how much impact that decision about which material you use is going to have, let's go ahead and change this, just for the sake of argument, just for fun, to polycarbonate. Now the result of this decision is an additional kilogram of CO2 for every single part you make. Staggering, right? That's good information to know. Now the next one is embodied energy, okay? Now what this does is calculates the amount of energy required to manufacture the part. Most of this is impacted by the material you've selected. But recyclability is a relative indication of how well this plastic either is scrapped or at the end of life can be reprocessed into something useful again. And finally, embodied water calculates how much water is required to manufacture the part, similar to what we did with the energy calculation. A lot of this is due to the raw material production itself. So to wrap it up, 
Multiflow DFM does a lot of cool stuff, really impressive technology. But the fact that you can now do simulation completely in line with the design, especially plastic simulation, is a huge improvement to the overall workflow and will result in an overall, overall higher quality of parts and a lot less time invested in design. So if you want more information, you can go to www.autodesk.com slash moldflow. So again, thanks for your time. I hope the DFM episode was interesting for you and, uh, and educational as well. Amazing technology. We're really proud of, uh, of what our developers around the world have collaborated and created to give you real-time plastic simulations. Um, simply amazing, especially to incorporate the, uh, the environmental impacts and the cost and time to manufacture. Just uh, really impressive stuff. So uh, if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact me, parker.wright at autodesk.com. And as always, thanks for your time.